Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. I'm really excited to share tips on growing Moringa trees in cold climates. Did I say cold climates? Yes, cold climates. It can be done, but it will take some effort on your part. So I'm really excited to share my accomplishments and trials and errors growing Moringa trees and tips I've, I've learned along the way. I am growing Moringa dwarf trees, also known as, as the miracle tree or tree of life because of its numerous health benefits. I started all of these Moringa trees from seed now keep in mind the Moringa tree is a tropical tree. It is believed to be native to the sub Himalayan tracts of Northern India, but is now found worldwide in the tropics and subtropics. Moringa needs about six hours of direct sunlight. I'm in zone 5B and both of these plants did well outdoors during the summer months. After bringing them in, they continued to grow until they were two feet tall and became very leggy, just like this, where all the leaves were at the top. What I've learned is when the Moringa plant is about two to three feet tall, you want to harvest the leaves and then prune the plant back several times to continue leaf production so the plant will become bushy like this. Therefore, I pruned both these Moringa plants back for more leaf production. I cut both these Moringa plants two inches from the soil level. So as you can see where I made the cut here, and then you can see where branches are coming out. Believe it or not, it was only when I cut this back that there apparently was another Moringa seed in the soil where this branch came up. A month later, you can see both are starting to send out more shoots. So again, this one is doing very well and starting to look bushy. Both stems have multiple, uh, multiple branches. For some reason, this one is growing slow, and I'm assuming it might have been over water. Therefore, I had to cut back on the watering. And because moringas have very, very long shoots, I started creating a humidifier tray at the bottom of this pot and allowed the water to be absorbed from the bottom to cut back on the watering at the top. One of the mistakes I have made is not having a well-drained soil. Moringa prefers well-drained sandy or loaming soil with a natural pH level and it cannot be waterlogged. And I'm thinking maybe after cutting this way back, as you can see, when I cut it back here, I had a branch or a stem to come up from right up at the bottom. But for some reason it got stunted. And I'm believing that maybe the soil in this pot is probably holding water a lot more than it should. And it might have got a little bit waterlogged, so I've been trying to keep it going. Believe it or not, this Moringa plant is actually growing in a northern exposure. Now, keep in mind, Moringa needs about six hours of direct sunlight, and this particular one is not getting six hours of direct sunlight, but I'm really impressed to see how well it has maintained. Not, although it's not growing very robust, it's hanging in there, but this one's going to get cut back. So, I'm going to show you just how 
I'm going to cut this back in order to stimulate more leaf production because not only is this leggy, but I need to move this plant down under my grow light so that I can get a more robust growth like this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this from the support and kind of give you an example of how to cut this back at least two inches from the soil level. So I would say maybe two inches from the soil level It's right about here. So I'm going to cut this back right about there. I will harvest these leaves and put them in my salad. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and cut this Moringa plant back just what, what I did so that I can get a bushier plant just like this. Now, because Moringa prefers well-drained sandy or loamy soil with a natural pH level, and cannot be waterlogged, I am also going to water this particular plant from the base, from the um, humidifier tray and not from the top. That's one of the struggles I've had growing Moringa plants is that they're very drought tolerant and uh, they are, they have a long tap root which makes them very resistant to periods of drought. So that's why I want to water only from the bottom because of the long tap root. So as you can see, I was able to get this one a lot bushier doing the same thing I did here. And this one I'm going to have to monitor very closely because I'm believing that the soil is a little heavier and is holding water a little more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to start another Moringa plant. I already have my soil and I made sure that the soil is half sand, half compost, and half potting soil. So I'm going to go ahead and add my soil to this pot. Another tip is because moringas have a long tap root, I want to try to make sure that I have long pots like this. This is a shorter pot, but long pots like this so that the tap root has, the, excuse me, the tap root, root has a room to extend their roots because they don't like their roots to circle around like this. So I'm going to add a little more soil. Okay. Again, I have 50% of rich soil that has compost in and 50% of sand. Moringa seeds should be soaked right before using. So I have, oops, I have soaked these Moringa seeds and I just soaked them for about a couple of, for maybe a day or two. And what that does, it helps, prop, it helps those seeds to propagate more. So I'm going to go ahead and plant the seeds not too deep and then just cover it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and put a saucer underneath this pot. Now I do want to give this soil a good watering because I did put seeds in the soil and I do want to monitor this to ensure that the soil is moist until the seeds propagate. I am going to put some mulch on top of it and I'm going to put this under my grow light. I am going to put this under my grow light too because 
the northern exposure it was getting, it wasn't growing well, but believe it or not, it was surviving. So there you have it. Growing Moringa trees in zone 5B in a northern climate. It can be done. Again, tips are they need at least six hours of direct sunlight. If you can't get it in, in, in a window exposure, do put it under grow light. Remember the soil has to be 50% rich soil and 50% sand. Keep in mind that it has a long tap root to make it resistant to periods of drought. So you want to make sure you have a fairly tall pot to grow your moringa tree in. You want to make sure you're cutting it back so it can be more bushier and you have a lot more branches. When this plant gets another two feet tall, I'll probably cut it back again so it can get much bushier. I will try to grow a couple of them in the pot during the summer and maybe put a, a, a couple of them outdoors in my uh, flower bed. So I just wanted to give you an update uh, and, and, and share tips on growing Moringa trees in a cold climate. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like button.